a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Ruth Bader Ginsburg Ruth Bader Ginsburg is an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. Ginsburg was appointed by President Bill Clinton and took the oath of office on August 10, 1993. She is the second female justice of four to be confirmed to the court. Following O'Connor's retirement, and until Sotomayor joined the court, Ginsburg was the only female justice on the Supreme Court. During that time, Ginsburg became more forceful with her dissents, which were noted by legal observers and in popular culture. She is generally viewed as belonging to the liberal wing of the court. Ginsburg has authored notable majority opinions, including United States v. Virginia, Olmsted v. Elsie and Friends of the Earth Inc. v. Laid Law Environmental Services Inc. Ginsburg was born in Brooklyn, New York. To Russian Jewish immigrants, her older sister died when she was a baby, and her mother, one of her biggest sources of encouragement, died shortly before Ginsburg graduated from high school. She then earned her bachelor's degree at Cornell University, and was a wife and mother before starting law school at Harvard, where she was one of the few women in her class. Ginsburg transferred to Columbia Law School, where she graduated tied for first in her class. Following law school, Ginsburg turned to academia. She was a professor at Rutgers School of Law and Columbia Law School. Teaching civil procedure as one of the few women in her field, Ginsburg spent a considerable part of her legal career as an advocate for the advancement of gender equality and women's rights. Winning multiple victories arguing before the Supreme Court, she advocated as a volunteer lawyer for the American Civil Liberties Union and was a member of its board of directors and one of its general counsels in the 1970s. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter appointed her to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, where she served until her appointment to the Supreme Court. Early Life and Education Joan Ruth Bader was born on March 15, 1933 in Brooklyn, New York, the second daughter of Celia and Nathan Bader, who lived in the Flatbush neighborhood. Her father was a Jewish emigrant from Odessa, then in the Russian Empire, and her mother was born in New York, to Austrian Jewish parents. The Bader's older daughter Mary Lynn died of meningitis at age six, when Ruth was 14 months old. The family called Joan Ruth, Kiki. A nickname Mary Lynn have given her for being, a Kiki baby. When, Kiki, started school, Celia discovered that her daughter's class had several other girls named Joan. So Celia suggested that the teacher call her daughter, Ruth, to avoid confusion. Although not devout, the Bader family belonged to East Midwood Jewish Center, a conservative synagogue, where Ruth learned tenets of the Jewish faith and gained familiarity with the Hebrew language. At age 13, Ruth acted as the camp rabbi at a Jewish summer program at Camp Chain Arwa in Minerva, New York. Celia took an active role in her daughter's education, often taking her to the library. Celia had been a good student in her youth, graduating from high school at age 15, yet she could not further her own education, because her family instead chose to send her brother to college. Celia wanted her daughter to get more education, which she thought would allow Ruth to become a high school history teacher. Ruth attended James Madison High School, whose law program later dedicated a courtroom in her honor. Celia struggled with cancer throughout Ruth's high school years and died the day before Ruth's high school graduation. Bader attended Cornell University in Ithaca, New York, where she was a member of Alpha Epsilon Phi. While at Cornell, she met Martin D. Ginsburg at age 17. She graduated from Cornell with a Bachelor of Arts degree in government on June 23, 1954. She was a member of Phi Beta Kappa and the highest-ranking female student in her graduating class. Bader married Ginsburg a month after her graduation from Cornell. She and Martin moved to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where he was stationed as a Reserve Officer's Training Corps Officer in the Army Reserve after his call-up to active duty. 
At age 21, she worked for the Social Security Administration office in Oklahoma, where she was demoted after becoming pregnant with her first child. She gave birth to a daughter in 1955. In the fall of 1956, Ginsburg enrolled at Harvard Law School, where she was one of only nine women in a class of about 500 men. The dean of Harvard Law reportedly asked the female law students, including Ginsburg, how do you justify taking a spot from a qualified man? When her husband took a job in New York City, Ginsburg transferred to Columbia Law School and became the first woman to be on two major law reviews, the Harvard Law Review and Columbia Law Review, in 1959. She earned her Juris Doctor at Columbia and tied for first in her class. Early Career At the start of her legal career, Ginsburg encountered difficulty in finding employment. In 1960, Supreme Court Justice Felix Frankfurter rejected Ginsburg for a clerkship position due to her gender. She was rejected despite a strong recommendation from Albert Martin Sachs, who was a professor and later dean of Harvard Law School. Columbia Law professor Gerald Gunther also pushed for Judge Edmund L. Palmieri of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York to hire Ginsburg as a law clerk, threatening to never recommend another Columbia student to Palmieri if he did not give Ginsburg the opportunity, and guaranteeing to provide the judge with a replacement clerk should Ginsburg not succeed. Later that year, Ginsburg began her clerkship for Judge Palmieri, and she held the position for two years. Academia From 1961 to 1963, Ginsburg was a research associate and then an associate director of the Columbia Law School Project on International Procedure. She learned Swedish to co-author a book with Anders Bruselius on civil procedure in Sweden. Ginsburg conducted extensive research for her book at Lund University in Sweden. Ginsburg's time in Sweden also influenced her thinking on gender equality. She was inspired when she observed the changes in Sweden, where women were 20 to 25 percent of all law students. One of the judges whom Ginsburg watched for her research was eight months pregnant and still working. Her first position as a professor was at Rutgers School of Law in 1963. The appointment was not without its drawbacks. Ginsburg was informed she would be paid less than her male colleagues, because she had a husband with a well-paid job. At the time Ginsburg entered academia, she was one of fewer than 20 female law professors in the United States. She was a professor of law, mainly civil procedure, at Rutgers from 1963 to 1972 receiving tenure from the school in 1969. In 1970, she co-founded the Women's Rights Law Reporter, the first law journal in the U.S. to focus exclusively on women's rights. From 1972 to 1980, she taught at Columbia, where she became the first tenured woman and co-authored the first law school casebook on sex discrimination. She also spent a year as a fellow of the Center for Advanced Study in the Behavioral Sciences at Stanford University from 1977 to 1978. Litigation and Advocacy In 1972, Ginsburg co-founded the Women's Rights Project at the American Civil Liberties Union and, in 1973, she became the ACLU's general counsel. The Women's Rights Project and related ACLU projects participated in over 300 gender discrimination cases by 1974. As the director of the ACLU's Women's Rights Project, she argued six gender discrimination cases before the Supreme Court between 1973 and 1976, winning five. Rather than asking the court to end all gender discrimination at once, Ginsburg charted a strategic course, taking aim at specific discriminatory statutes and building on each successive victory. She chose plaintiffs carefully, at times picking male plaintiffs to demonstrate that gender discrimination was harmful to both men and women. The laws Ginsburg targeted included those that on the surface appeared beneficial to women, but in fact reinforced the notion that women needed to be dependent on men. 
her strategic advocacy extended to word choice, favoring the use of gender instead of sex. After her secretary suggested the word sex would serve as a distraction to judges, she obtained a reputation as a skilled oral advocate, and her work led directly to the end of gender discrimination in many areas of the law. Ginsburg volunteered to write the brief for Reed v. Reed, in which the Supreme Court extended the protections of the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to women. She argued in one frontier v. Richardson, which challenged a statute making it more difficult for a female service member to claim an increased housing allowance for her husband than for a male service member seeking the same allowance for his wife. Ginsburg argued that the statute treated women as inferior, and the Supreme Court ruled 8-1 in her favor. The court again ruled in Ginsburg's favor in Weinberger v. Wiesenfeld, where Ginsburg represented a widow and denied survivor benefits under Social Security, which permitted widows, but not widowers to collect special benefits while caring for minor children. She argued that the statute discriminated against male survivors of workers by denying them the same protection as their female counterparts. Ginsburg filed an amicus brief and sat with counsel at oral argument for Craig v. Warren, which challenged an Oklahoma statute that set different minimum drinking ages for men and women. For the first time, the court imposed what is known as intermediate scrutiny on laws discriminating based on gender, a heightened standard of constitutional review. Her last case as a lawyer before the Supreme Court was 1978's Duran v. Missouri, which challenged the validity of voluntary jury duty for women, on the ground that participation in jury duty was a citizen's vital governmental service and therefore should not be optional for women. At the end of Ginsburg's oral argument, then Associate Justice William Rehnquist asked Ginsburg, you won't settle for putting Susan B. Anthony on the new dollar, then? Ginsburg said she considered responding. We won't settle for tokens, but instead opted not to answer the question. Legal scholars and advocates credit Ginsburg's body of work with making significant legal advances for women under the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. Taken together, Ginsburg's legal victories discouraged legislatures from treating women and men differently under the law. She continued to work on the ACLU's Women's Rights Project until her appointment to the federal bench in 1980. Later, colleague Antonin Scalia praised Ginsburg's skills as an advocate. She became the leading litigator on behalf of women rights, the third good marshal of that cause, so to speak. U.S. Court of Appeals Ginsburg was nominated by President Jimmy Carter on April 14, 1980, to a seat on the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit vacated by Judge Harold Leventhal after his death. She was confirmed by the United States Senate on June 18, 1980, and received her commission later that day. Her service terminated on August 9, 1993, due to her elevation to the United States Supreme Court. During her time as a judge on the D.C. Circuit, Ginsburg often found consensus with her colleagues including conservatives Robert H. Bork and Antonin Scalia. Her time on the court earned her a reputation as a cautious jurist and a moderate. David S. Tattle replaced her after Ginsburg's appointment to the Supreme Court. Nomination and Confirmation President Bill Clinton nominated her as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court on June 14, 1993, to fill the seat vacated by retiring Justice Byron White. Ginsburg was recommended to Clinton by then U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno after a suggestion by Utah Republican Senator Orrin Hatch. At the time of her nomination, Ginsburg was viewed
foods as a moderate. Clinton was reportedly looking to increase the court's diversity, which Ginsburg did as the first Jewish justice since the 1969 resignation of Justice Abe Fortas, the first ever female Jewish justice, and the second female justice. She eventually became the longest-serving Jewish justice ever. The American Bar Association's Standing Committee on the Federal Judiciary rated Ginsburg as well-qualified. Its highest possible rating for a prospective justice. During her subsequent testimony before the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee as part of the confirmation hearings, she refused to answer questions about her view on the constitutionality of some issues such as the death penalty as it was an issue that she might have to vote on if it came before the court. At the same time, Ginsburg did answer questions about some potentially controversial issues. For instance, she affirmed her belief in a constitutional right to privacy and explained at some length her personal judicial philosophy and thoughts regarding gender equality. Ginsburg was more forthright in discussing her views on topics about which she had previously written. The United States Senate confirmed her by a 96-3 vote on August 3, 1993. She received her commission on August 5, 1993, and she took her judicial oath on August 10, 1993. Ginsburg's name was later invoked during the confirmation process of John Roberts. Ginsburg herself was not the first nominee to avoid answering certain specific questions before Congress, and as a young lawyer in 1981 Roberts had advised against Supreme Court nominees giving specific responses. Nevertheless, some conservative commentators and senators invoked the phrase, Ginsburg precedent, to defend his demurrers. In a September 28, 2005 speech at Wake Forest University, Ginsburg said that Roberts' refusal to answer questions during his Senate confirmation hearings on some cases was unquestionably right. Supreme Court Jurisprudence Ginsburg characterizes her performance on the court as a cautious approach to adjudication. She argued in a speech shortly before her nomination to the court that motions seem to me right, in the main. For constitutional as well as common law adjudication, Doctrinal limbs too swiftly shaped, experienced teachers, may prove unstable. Legal scholar Cass Sunstein has characterized Ginsburg as a rational minimalist, a jurist who seeks to build cautiously on precedent rather than pushing the Constitution towards her own vision. The retirement of Justice Sandra Day O'Connor in 2006 left Ginsburg as the only woman on the court. Linda Greenhouse of the New York Times referred to the subsequent 2006-2007 term of the court as the time when Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg found her voice and used it. The term also marked the first time in Ginsburg's history with the court where she read multiple dissents from the bench, a tactic employed to signal more intense disagreement with the majority. With the retirement of Justice John Paul Stevens, Ginsburg became the senior member of what is sometimes referred to as the court's liberal wing, when the court splits 5-4 along ideological lines, and the liberal justices are in the minority. Ginsburg often has the authority to assign authorship of the dissenting opinion, because of her seniority. Ginsburg has been a proponent of the liberal dissenters speaking, with one voice, and, where practicable, presenting a unified approach to which all of the dissenting justices can agree. Abortion Ginsburg discussed her views on abortion and sexual equality in a 2009 New York Times interview, in which she said about abortion that, the basic thing is that the government has no business making that choice for the woman. Although Ginsburg has consistently supported abortion rights, and joined in the court's opinion striking down Nebraska's partial birth abortion law in Stenberg v. Carhart, on the 40th anniversary of the court's ruling in Roe v. Wade. She criticized the decision in Roe as terminating a nascent democratic movement to liberalize abortion laws which might have built a more durable consensus in support of abortion rights. 
Ginsberg was in the minority for Gonzalez v. Carhart, a 5-4 decision upholding restrictions on partial birth abortion, in her dissent. Ginsburg opposed the majority's decision to defer to legislative findings that the procedure was not safe for women. Ginsburg focused her ire on the way Congress reached its findings and with the veracity of the findings. Joining the majority for Whole Woman's Health v. Hellerstedt, a case which struck down parts of a 2013 Texas law regulating abortion providers. Ginsburg also authored a short concurring opinion which was even more critical of the legislation at issue. She asserted the legislation was not aimed at protecting women's health, as Texas had claimed, but rather to impede women's access to abortions. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?